fifth and final section of chapter two, allocation problems. And this section is about linear programming. So the first thing to note is that when we uh, formulate these linear programming inequalities, uh, equalities, syntax is really important. So uh, the way that we write out stuff is important. So I'm gonna step you through all of this so you know exactly what you need to do. So the first thing we need to do is to define our decision variables and they're gonna be of this form, x, i, j, or x sub i, j, and i is going to represent a worker and j is going to represent a task. Now, part of uh, setting up our decision variables or defining our decision variables is saying what values i and j can take. So what we're going to have uh, in these curly brackets here on my poor attempt at drawing curly brackets is going to be the workers. So for example, A, B, C, and so on. Okay, so these letters are going to be representing our different workers. We need to do the same for J and say what values J can take. And that's going to represent our tasks. So the tasks may be task one, two, three, and so on. It all depends um, what the question uh, uses, but that's just an example. So we need to set these decision variables up and say, right, what are the set of values for I, our workers? What are the set of values for J, our tasks? Next thing we need to do is we need to use binary coding to show which task can be allocated to which workers because there are some cases where certain workers cannot do certain tasks. Now, if X sub I J is equal to one, that means that the worker can be allocated or worker I can be allocated to task J. And if X sub I J is equal to zero, that means that worker I cannot be allocated to task J. So once we've got these things, we can then do our three steps in linear uh, programming, which is going to be, first thing, define our decision variables, which is what we've got up here. Next, we're gonna write down what the objective function is. So the objective function could be that you want to maximize a profit or minimize the cost, it's normally what you need to do, or even minimize the time, for example. And then we're gonna write down what our constraints are and, um, those constraints are gonna consist of this binary coding uh, that we just talked about here. Example eight, four workers, Amy, Bob, Chris, and Dave are to be assigned to tasks one, two, three, and four. Each worker is assigned to just one task and each task is to be completed by one worker. The time in minutes taken by each worker to complete each task is shown in the table. The total time is to be minimized. And what we need to do is to formulate this as a linear programming problem. So the first thing we need to do is to define our decision variables and the decision variable we're going to use is x sub ij. Then we also need to define i. Now i remember are the workers and uh, fortunately for us our workers we can just use a, b, c, d. Amy, Bob, Chris, Dave, we don't need to write the whole names in. Um, so A, B, C, and D, they're the values that I can take. Uh, we need to do the same for J, the tasks, and the tasks are just one, two, three, and four. Now we also need to do our binary coding, and we'll do this in the form of a piecewise function which we're basically gonna say that if x i sub i j is equal to one, that means that um, we can allocate worker i to task j. And if it's equal to zero, we could also write down here, worker i cannot do task j. Uh, we can just put otherwise, it save time. So otherwise, or the opposite statement that we've just written there, which is work I cannot do task J. So we've now defined our decision variables. The next thing that we need to do is to write down the objective function. So write down 
the objective function. And uh, we'll just write that down in words first, what we need to do. And we need to minimize the total time. Minimize the total time. And I can call that T. So I'll write down that I want to minimize T. And then the next part's a long part because we actually need to write down uh, this whole thing where we say x sub a1 and that needs to be times by 14 plus 17 times by x sub i a2 sorry and then 21 or plus 21 times by x sub a3 and so on so rather than talk for the whole thing I'll write down uh, the whole thing now okay so here's the final thing here this is what we need to minimize. As you can see, it's quite long. So do be careful when you write this out. Just make sure that your coefficients here match with the table. So 14, 17, 21, 25, 14, 17, 21, 25, and then 18, 15, 19, 22, 18, 15, 19, 22, and then 16, 14, 17, 28, 16, 14, 17, 28, and then 2018, 20, 2024, 20, 20, 20, and then just check through your letters and numbers here so a1 a2 a3 a4 b1 b2 b3 b4 c1 to c4 and then d1 to d4 so just check through that it's easy to make a mistake if um, you sort of rush this so the last part is to write down the constraints so we're going to write subdict 2 and this is where we're going to use the binary coding now basically um, we're only going to allocate one worker to one task so whichever row we take, for example, Amy, she's only going to be allocated to one of these tasks. So I could say that in terms of allocation, the sum of these values for this row is going to be one because only one of these is going to be allocated. So imagine there's like ones and zeros uh, in this table. The second for Bob, he can only be allocated to one task. So actually the sum of the values in this row here is also going to be one we're talking about allocation here now we could write out like you know that uh, this uh, one here x sub a1 plus x sub a2 plus x sub a3 plus x sub a4 is going to be equal to one but we can shorten it and basically say well the sum of all the values in the a column in terms of allocation is going to be one saves a bit of time the same with row two we can only allocate worker b to one task we can only allocate worker c to one task we can only allocate worker d to one task the same goes for the task each task can only be allocated to one worker so we could say that the sum of the allocation for i sub 1 in other words for this column is equal to 1 the sum of the allocation for task 2 is also 1 and the same for task 3 and then the same for task 4 so it's a bit fiddly but um it will save time let's just put that summation symbol in there okay so this can be a shorthand way of writing it unfortunately the objective function does need to be written in full like this there's no shorthand way of doing that example nine the table shows the time in minutes taken for four workers a b c and d to do each of three tasks p q and r each worker can be assigned to one task and each task is to be completed by one worker. There's some important information here. Worker B cannot be assigned to task R and worker D cannot be assigned to task Q. Formulate the problem as a linear programming problem, defining your variables and making the objective and constraints clear. So the first thing that we note is this is not balanced in terms of we've got more workers than tasks. So we need to add 
a dummy task. We need to add a dummy task. Now, normally we would use D for dummy, but we've got D, worker D, so it makes sense just to sort of call it S, the next letter in the alphabet. Now, we don't need to fill in the table, but we know that these would be zero. There's zero cost associated with that because it's just a dummy that allows us to carry out the algorithm. So we'll start by defining our decision variables. Now we're going to have x sub ij, where i are the workers, a, b, c, and d. And j represents the tasks, including the dummy, p, q, r, and s. Now we need to set up our um, binary coding as well and um, say, right, okay, if x sub ij is equal to 1, that means that worker i can do task j and 0 it means they can't do it, so we'll just put otherwise. Now we'll write down our objective function and here although it doesn't say it um, because this is time here uh, we need to minimize the time now often in these problems um, you'll see that time is sort of equivalent to cost so we'll use c rather than t so we're minimizing basically the cost where the cost is time minimize c and when we write uh, this down we only need to write down the values that we've got here so that all of these dashes we can leave those blank and the zeros blank so i'll just start it off so x uh, sub ap and that's going to be multiplied by 10 so let's write that in first so 10 x sub ap plus 14 x sub aq you get the idea so i'll just write the rest out so here's the completed um, objective function so again just check your uh, coefficients here 10 14 20 12 14 11 16 22 13 21 and then we've got aq uh, ap aqar bp bq but no br because worker B cannot do task R, uh, CP, CQ, uh, CR, so this is what I went for it, CR, and then DP, no DQ, because a worker D cannot be assigned to Q, and then lastly DR, so it's worth going through just in case something gets missed out. And then the last thing we need to do is to write down what this is subject to, And these are our constraints. So basically it's going to be that each row in each column can only have a sum of one. Only one worker can be allocated to each task. So we'll start you off. So the sum of row A is one. The sum of row B is one and so on. And also the sum of each row or column so it can only be one so i'll start you off so that's going to be i p and then i q and then i r and we also need to include the dummy as well so don't miss that one out and the reason we do that is each worker needs to be allocated to a task, even if that task is the dummy task. Example 10. Four machines, one, two, three, and four, are to be used to perform four tasks, A, B, C, D. Each machine is to be assigned to just one task. 
and each task must be assigned to just one machine. The profit generated when each machine performs each task is given in the table. The company wishes to maximize the total profit. So that's going to form part of our objective function. And there's the usual information here about formulating this as a linear programming problem. So the first thing that we need to do is to find um, our decision variables. We could just write decision variables. So x sub i j, where i are our workers, one, two, three, four, and j are the tasks, a, b, c, and d. And also, we want to say right, something about the allocation. So a piecewise function, one, which basically means that worker I can do ta ta um, task J, worker I can do task J, and then zero, they can't do it, so just otherwise. Next thing that we need to do is to write down our objective function. Um, let's just do it here, objective function. And our objective function this time is to maximize our profit. Now we can think of profit as cost. So we can use C and say that we want to maximize C or you could maximize P or just maximize profit. Any of those is suitable. I'm going to write down what that's going to be equal to. I'll start it off down here. I'll have to uh, carry on up here when I write it down. So here's the full objective function and just like before, check your uh, coefficients and check your letters and numbers down here. And then lastly, we'll just write down uh, what it's subject to our constraints. And that's basically that one worker can do one task and one task can only be allocated to one worker. So that's the last part here using the shorthand. Basically, the sum of every row, these ones, these ones can only be one. The sum of every column, these four here can only be one. OK, so you should now be able to do exercise 2D on pages 65 to 66, then have a go at the mixed exercise.